All right, good uh, Tuesday uh, to all of my honors geometry students. Uh, this is Mrs. Conway coming to you again um, via video. And um, again, I'm sorry for my absence today. However, I will be back tomorrow. Um, with that being said, I hope that all of you had a chance to get started, if not complete the assignment from section 4.1. Um, we will be checking that um, as well as the homework assignment for tonight. Um, tomorrow during class time. Um, so make sure you get those done. But we're going to go ahead now and get started on section 4.2 in your textbook, um, which is specifically focusing on triangle congruence. And some questions that you might be having right now is do we need triangle congruence to postulates and why? And what is the least amount of information we need to know about two triangles in order to prove they are congruent? Um, do we need to make sure that it's the polygon congruence postulates? Do all sides and all angles of a triangle have to be congruent in order for us to say that they are congruent? Um, we're going to be answering that today. So moving on, again, if you need to pause a slide at any time, please feel free just to hit that pause button or rewind or whatever you need to do at the bottom of the screen. Um, but we're going to first talk about the side, side, side postulate. And basically that states that if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then these two triangles are congruent. Notice that this does not say anything about angles. And you might be saying no angles. Hmm. Okay. And in this case, you actually don't need to know anything about the angles of triangles in order to say that they're congruent. If you know that all three sides of one triangle are congruent to all three sides of another triangle, then you can for sure say that the two triangles are congruent. So there's really only one triangle, one unique triangle that you can make because no matter how many of these you make, are they ever going to be different? The answer is no. You're always just going to have one triangle that has these measures of sides. Um, so that is why and how we get the side, side, side postulate. So in this case, we have that ZX is congruent to CA, and we have XY is congruent to AB, and we also have that YZ is congruent to BC. Therefore, we can conclude that by the side, side, side postulate, the triangles are congruent. Um, this is a really good demonstration. We might actually still do it when I get back tomorrow. Um, but if you take three straws and cut them the same size and somebody else takes three straws and cuts them the same size and you string them all together, you're only going to be able to make one triangle. Um, and because of the side, side, side postulate, this is true. Feel free to pause if needed, but we're going to move on. The next is the side angle side postulate. It's often abbreviated as SAS. And it states that if two sides of the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then these two triangles are congruent. Now what do we mean by included angle? If you need to pause this just right now so that you can get the side angle side postulate copied down before you start listening to the next section, um, the sub please feel free to go ahead and pause this. So we have what we call the included angle. And the included angle means the angle between two sides. In other words, it's the angle included between the two sides. So it's basically the vertex of where the two sides come together. That is what the included angle means. So if I have these two sides, where do those two sides meet? At where what vertex? Well, they meet at the vertex of C. So therefore, angle C is the included angle of side AC and BC. So now if we have two triangles and all we know about them, nothing else, we don't know that the other angles are the same, we don't know that these other two sides are the same. If I just know that AC is congruent to XZ and angle C is congruent to angle Z and CB is congruent to ZY, then I can state that the two triangles are congruent and therefore by side angle side postulate. That is why the triangles are congruent. So that is called the side angle side postulate. And again, this included angle is a very important part of this. If you need to pause it, go ahead and pause it. And I'm going to be moving on. 
So how do I know, how do I identify basically two triangles that have that side angle side relationship? So we have four pairs of triangles. Which of these pairs do you think use the side angle side relationship? If you want to go ahead and pause it before I answer it, that way it gives you a chance to kind of take a look and guess for yourselves before I tell you, go ahead and pause it. All right, so let's look at each of these triangles. Notice I have two sides here. However, is their included angle the one that is congruent? Well, if you look down to where the vertex of these two sides meet, that should be angle H. So is angle H the angle that we know? No, it is not. In this case, we know um, this angle right here, which I think is supposed to be J. There we go. Um, and since that is not the included angle. Pair one is not with the relationship of side angle side. Let's look at pair two. Pair two, we have an angle and two sides. And again, is I the included angle? No, it is not. J should be the included angle. So therefore, pair two is not. Look at pair three, same thing. This is not the included angle. The included angle should be the vertex of the two sides. So here's side one, side two, and that vertex is right here. So therefore, pair three is not side angle side, and pair four is the only one that has the included angle in the relationship. Okay, so pair four. Let's move on. Um, next one. So we just did side angle side. Now we're going to do angle, side, angle, often abbreviated ASA. It states that if two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of another triangle, then these two triangles are congruent. A little bit of an opposite thing, and again, we only need those three pieces of information. We don't need anything about the other angle or the other two sides. Um, all we need is that the two angles and the included side. And again, just as included angle in the other slide, the included side is basically the side between the two angles. So the vertices of the two angles are the endpoints of the segment. So if I look at these two, here are my two angles. Notice the vertices A and B are the endpoints of the segment that I need. So I have angle, side, angle. So in this case, angle A is congruent to angle X, angle B is congruent to angle Y, and side AB is congruent to side XY. And therefore, by the angle side angle postulate, the triangles are congruent. If you need to pause it, go ahead. So let's go ahead and again identify angle side angle relationships in which pair of triangles pictured below could you use the angle side angle postulate to prove the triangles are congruent. Is it pair one, pair two, pair three, or pair four? Again, if you want to take a minute or so to look at this before I answer, you can go ahead and pause this um, while you look at that. Pair one, here's my two angles. Look at the vertices A and C. Is that the segment I'm using? No, they are using segment AB. So AB is not the included side, therefore pair one is not correct. Pair two, same thing. Here's my two angles. I should be using segment AC, but since I'm not, it is wrong. Pair three, same thing. Two angles. This is not the included side, so that is wrong. And pair four, again, is the correct way of using side angle, or sorry, excuse me, angle, side, angle. So here's angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle, they do have to be in that order. Okay? So that is how you identify whether or not you have triangles that are congruent. You only need three pieces of information. So we first stated side, side, side postulate. If I know three sides are congruent to three sides of another one, then I know that the triangles are congruent. Second one was side, angle, side. The the um, two sides and the included angle. And the final one was 
angle side angle, which I had needed the two angles and the included side. Okay. Uh, again, you will have a practice that you will need to com have completed by the end of class. And that concludes my video lessons. This one again will be posted um, to YouTube and then linked on Edline um, for your viewing pleasure. Um, if you have any questions tomorrow, I will be back and uh, we will pick up from here tomorrow. Uh, have a good evening and make sure you get that homework done.